Thank you for joining my talk today on cultivating belonging in online courses with STEAM, social distance, but not social isolation. You might not be familiar with the phrase STEAM, but I'm sure you're all familiar with the phrase STEM or the acronym STEM, science, technology, education, and math. STEAM is STEM plus the addition of arts. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about how using art in a science class can add a lot of emotional connectivity as well as ways for students to express their knowledge in new forms. So I wanted to develop a connection uh, with my students. Um, I'm in a large lecture class, but what I'm mostly going to talk about is the sudden switch to online learning in the spring during the coronavirus pandemic. There, is been, there have been multiple, multiple studies on the importance of emotional connectivity to, to deep cognition and also to creating long-lasting memories. If you're familiar at all with Bloom's taxonomy of learning, a lot of people, uh, excuse me, not a lot of people, people ha have uh, suggested that emotional connectivity and, is the first step before you can even get to understanding. You need to have curiosity and piqued interest. This diagram, uh, shows the multiple phases or different types of emotion and learning. Um, number one is where we all like to start, we think of with curiosity and awe and satisfaction and learning, a very positive affect. Uh, phase two often happens. Sometimes we deliberately and try to create cognitive dissonance, which causes puzzlement and confusing, something that is not intuitive to their learning. Uh, but we don't want students to go from disappointment to frustration uh, that is not a comfortable place to be emotionally though sometimes that is a uh, part of the cycle they need to go through in order to discard misconceptions to unlearn certain things so they can develop research have sort of new gaps in their knowledge they've identified and be hopeful learning about um, I will post all the references for these diagrams which unfortunately are not showing up in this slide so emotional learning has been very well studied for decades now. I wanted to tap into that emotional learning by using art. Here is another diagram of emotion and cognition. And emotional thought is the platform for learning, memory, decision-making, and creativity, both in social and non-social contexts. I'm particularly interested in this arrow that shows the oscillation back and forth of how cognition affects emotion and emotion affects cognition. And I think that's where all of us in sensor really live, that rational thought can inform emotional thought. And this is the pathway of high level social and moral emotions, ethics, and of motivated reasoning. Creativity can also be informed by high reason. And motivated reasoning is at the heart of Sensor. If you look at the mission statement, it is to empower responsible lifelong learners who can apply the knowledge, values, and methods of science, that's the reasoning component, to the complex civic challenges facing our democracy, that's the motivating component. There are many, many ways to motivate people. That is what Sensor has been doing for 20 years through humanitarian issues, issues social issues, civic issues. Um, I have been doing a sensorized course for almost 20 years. Um, it's called AIDS and Other Emerging Diseases. This is not my classroom. This is clip art, but it is very typical of how I have to teach in a large auditorium with fixed seats. I usually have 200 to 300 students. It was 220 this spring. This course is designed for non-majors, but many majors enroll because they want that sensorized approach to learning biology. Now, I have a toolbox for how to engage students in this classroom, but then March 2020 happened, and my toolbox went out the window um, as all of our lives got disrupted. Uh, my students went home for spring break or went on adventure for spring break and were told three days into spring break that they were not allowed to return to campus. They could not collect any of their belongings. They had to go home or they had to go somewhere. We had international students not knowing where to go. We had students not wanting to go home or to places where they did not felt safe or comfortable or in a good learning environment. 
So I had to, like all of us, um, come up with new things to try and do while shifting to online in a high stress moment. I refocused my course on COVID-19, not hard, it's an emerging diseases class. Um, I hope it is the one time in my life where I get to teach about an acute pandemic from the middle of it. I've obviously been teaching about the AIDS pandemic um, for decades. I wanted to figure out how to retain engagement with my 220 students online, keep what emotional connectivity we had created with our a third of the class that had been um, in person, and mostly I wanted to create stress relief. We're going to be talking about coronavirus. Students were living in many places that were being deeply, deeply impacted by coronavirus. They, none of them knew when they would be able to come back to campus. Um, stressful all around. And I saw this as an opportunity for a new avenue for emotional connectivity. Art is a way of expressing things you couldn't do in other ways, or it might give you a new lens of looking on material, and it certainly can um, be a way of alleviating stress. So I threw out broad assignment, create a TikTok video that connects to a theme or concept in the course, extra credit. Everyone was super stressed about grades. They were, students didn't have their laptops, their books, all sorts of problems. And I just said, you know, aren't I the cool professor? I know what TikTok is, which is, of course, silly and made them laugh just by that. Um, but they came back and said, students asked if they could write poetry, haikus, expressive essays, uh, do paintings, graphic design, illustration, art. Um, they wanted to use their skill sets and their lenses for looking at the material that we had been discussing that semester. And that became really exciting. So it broadened into you have to do some form of expressive art with art writ large, and it had to connect to a scientific theme in the course, one of the social science themes of the course, or it could be used strictly for personal expression for what they were going through at the time. And students used all three of these. Um, some students did multiple projects um, in order to hit different elements here. Now, this is a way for students in isolation, not all students were uh, isolated from their families, but um, it was a way for them to have something constructive to do that felt they were moving forward in the class as well as just watching Zoom videos. So I had, here's a, here is a scientific pro product that a student created, a very sophisticated um, graphic illustration uh, that explained zoonotic transfer, ecosystem health, the importance of that to emerging diseases, changes in human demographics and density, connected it all to an Institute of Medicine report that we had read earlier in the class. Again, they had the choice of looking back, thinking through everything that we had done so far or were currently doing and what resonated with them. Again, much, much earlier in the semester, uh, we had studied antiretroviral drugs and the red triangle in this diagram is an inhibitor for one of the co-receptors of HIV so it can't get into an, a T cell, a CD4 cell. And a student created this TikTok, which is silly, but explains something. Ooh, let me in. I be the I did you why? Oh my God, no, do not let her in. I'm trying. Okay, that can seem very silly and perhaps frivolous, but here is a student sitting in her room um, with a camera and looking at her door and thinking that door functions like this synthetic chemical that binds to a receptor that would keep some, a virus out of a cell. That door is functioning like a, a blockage to a receptor and being able to just put that together and also having her skim through in her head the different concepts we studied in order to figure out what she could create. Um, a very short, silly video about, but a lot of thinking sort of had to go into that. Earlier in the semester, we had briefly talked about Keith Haring, the famous artist who created art during some of the most robust protest movements in the early part of the AIDS pandemic, and a student decided to use his style to recreate informative pieces of art 
um, about coronavirus and social distancing. So again, each student now had to say, I have something that I can bring to this class. And I think that built a stronger connection. One more TikTok. This is created in early April when we were all talking about what does flatten the curve mean? What can we all do to do that? If you want quarantine to end quickly. If you want online classes to only be this spring. Don't you dare leave your house. If you do, you better cover your mouth. You don't know if you're sick. You could just be asymptomatic. Please at least try to subscribe to doing your part to serve the public interest. Social distance so we can all flatten the curve. I like that video. Uh what this is actually half of a video is supposed to go with another one by another group of students on the other part of the country that are friends with Amira here. Um, they did a choreography to her music, but what I liked about that was that they coordinated and worked together um, while socially distanced. One of the social concepts we covered in my class was understanding a risk environment or the social ecology in which an individual lives, which is understanding the structures and institutions outside of individual choice and agency that leads to increased risk. A student reflecting on the course and trying to decide what to produce decided to write this poem called Pick Two. Things like poverty, migration for work, abuse, trauma, drug use, historical racism, institutional racism, gender inequalities, survival sex, mental illness, cultural fragmentation. And tell them to look the other way. Tell them to stop leading people the wrong way or worse yet, not guiding them at all. These problems are difficult enough on their own. They are too difficult to identify early, contain fast. It is not enough access. It is not enough fairness. None of this is enough. To fix the gap, to mend the old wound that leaves new scars. There are things we cannot control and others that form our risk environment. See, jump in, fall in, get pushed in, push another in. Pick two. She clearly understands the lack of agency that can happen when you're in a risk environment, which was a key concept, knows a number of different things that cause risk environments, and also had to think through the class syllabus to think about what concepts she wanted to present. A group of haikus written by one student, coronavirus, a pandemic in our world, from bats to humans, zoonotic disease, COVID-19, Ebola, just two examples. Social distancing, the best way to slow the spread, flattening the curve. Scared at home we wait, praying for the sick and dead, but this too shall pass. I included this one because it brings up scared and I received quite a few products from students that talked about negative emotions, talked about fear, talked about stigmatization, talked about racism. And I'm gonna share a few of them with you those are conversations that I might not have had with students in a class of 220 when they didn't have this avenue of sharing their feelings with me. So on April 7, 2020, uh, in Sam's Club, a, stab, a suspect stabbed a family that he perceived as Chinese. They weren't, but that's irrelevant. Um, that were infecting people with coronavirus. A student produced this illustration for me as her assignment. Wear a mask and get stabbed by racists. Don't wear a mask and die of COVID. I had a student write this poem. I'm gonna give you a minute to just read it. This is obviously, well, the, 
Black Lives Movement has been going on for quite a while. It oscillates in attention depending on what horrific event is most recently in the news. Um, we had also talked about uh, the um, overabundance of people of color dying of COVID as well as um, suffering excess morbidity. So this student was able to share her personal stress about this in a way um, that allowed her to talk to me through a different avenue. And um, that led to multiple conversations, which was really useful for both of us. So I started this partly to blow off steam for students to blow off steam and to allow them to be silly. I, I did encourage and we had a lot of silly TikToks and other um, pieces of art. Um, but it really grew into something I think fairly profound, at least for me. Um, 167 students submitted work. Uh, it was for extra credit. Uh, I responded to almost all of them personally, whether it was great job, that's really funny, you made me laugh, or can we talk more about this? How are you doing? Uh, it allowed me to build connections between students and allow them to say, hey, so-and-so also wrote about that. Would you like to connect and start talking about that? And some support groups were created. There was absolutely active learning going on. They had to review the syllabus, as I said, figure out which concept they wanted, how they wanted to express it. There was a lot of action on their part for this. And what I like is they spontaneously started working in groups, even when socially apart, and that's a tool I hope to employ in the future. I love this illustration that was published this spring in the Washington Post. Um, this spring was a very emotional time. Uh, I think this fall will be as well with many of my students online. I'm gonna be working with freshmen all over the world in an online course. Um, we obviously will not be hugging our students in person, but I think we can make our classes warm and welcoming. We can make space for them, for their curiosity, as well as their fears. And I think emotional connectivity is even more important in an online class than in an in-person class. And I have decided allowing students to do art is the way to foster that. I've had a little more time to plan, though honestly I haven't that much because it's been a crazy summer. So I'm gonna make the plan, try to execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails, and hopefully not throw away the plan, but try and learn a little more, be a little more uh, intentional than I was this spring, create specific assignments that they will have to do one directly linked to a natural science concept or a social science concept, or do a personal reflection piece later on. So these are gonna be staggered throughout the semester. I currently do email reflections every two weeks, but I'm going to open it up to, instead of just writing, to do art as well. These are all participation. This is a way for people to tell me things without raising hands or poking on Zoom to say they have something to say, something they might wanna express in a different format. I think this will allow multiple ways of communication and for students to demonstrate learning, which I'm very excited about. I am going to assign groups to build community. As I say, my students will be all over the world. If they have to be working together on a common project um, that is perhaps uh, less formal than um, doing a paper together or a poster together, but some kind of art project, I think it might be a good way for them to get to know each other better. And because I will be more intentional this year, I'll be collecting feedback on the impact of this on my students' learning as well as their sense of connection to the material. Thank you, I appreciate you listening to this talk and I look forward to chatting about your ideas of how to include art in STEM.